Lions TV, we are sponsored by Regal Elevators and Lifts Consultants Limited, a company that is owned and operated by a Millwall fan, just like every single one of the sponsors that you can already see on the screen. If you are going to do a little bit of business in 2022, then please keep it in the Mill family by checking out all of our sponsors' website links in the description below. This is your Thursday Club video. We're going to look back at a very good point on the road, in my opinion, against Blackburn Rovers on Tuesday night. Yes, we got penned in for a long period of the game. Yes, we had no attacking threat and no shots on goal, let alone no shots on target. But in my opinion, still a fantastic result and I'm going to tell you why shortly. We're of course also going to look ahead to the visit of Chris Wilder's Middlesbrough on Saturday at the Den. They of course lost on Tuesday night, carved up by Wilder's former club, Sheffield United. The Blaze went to town and beat Middlesbrough by four goals to one, which makes for very interesting thinking ahead of Saturday. But as always, let's wind it back to Tuesday night's result and Operation Ewood Park. OK, so it was an unchanged side from the team that won previously on the road against Reading by one goal to nil. Back-to-back 1-0 wins. Of course, it was five in a row. We didn't get the goal last night. However, yet another clean sheet and we sort of scraped it, didn't we? Poor finishing from Rovers really gave us that point and some refereeing decisions that also went our way. And it feels refreshing to say that. It does feel really refreshing to say that. We always, you know, get bad decisions or... So things happen, you say, ah, that can only happen to us. Has now the pendulum finally swung and we have become a side that, that ride there like a little bit, get a couple of decisions here and there. And could that now put us in pole position for a push towards the playoffs? Last night, for me, the biggest issue was the lack of attacking threat. And if the front three weren't at it, which they wasn't, like they wasn't against Reading, in my opinion, they couldn't make anything stick. And as a result, Things kept coming back and we was getting extra, extra pressure on the midfielders and the defence. But, look, made a fantastic save in the second half. I haven't watched the highlights back. I'm going off memory because, as you can see, I'm in the mobile office and I will shortly be starting work. But, listen, Bart, fantastic save. Fantastic for us. But I don't think he had too much to do. The wingbacks couldn't get forward because they kept knocking them beautiful little balls that I always talk about. Flat straight balls in behind, uh, in between, sorry, Wing, uh, wing backs and centre backs and running around the back of us and they was executing everything to perfection Rovers except their finishing and they badly miss Brereton and Diaz and this is re resulted of course you know in their slip down the table they've scored only one goal in their last six games so can't argue with the defence uh, Ballard went off injured at half time looking for a little bit more information on that one going forward and when I get it I will share it on the social media platforms don't forget to follow us of course on Instagram and of course we have passed 17,000 subscribers, so don't be shy to click that subscribe button. would really, really help me out with the channel. But yeah, look, Ballard goes off. George Evans come on. I actually think that George Evans had a really good game when he come on. Not long after that, I think Pierce comes on. Bury goes off. He goes, as he has done in recent weeks, two up top, five at the back, and um, a three-man midfield. So I thought Evans had a good game to him, fair play. And I also think that our best two players on the pitch... Uh, aside from Bart for that fantastic save with Billy Mitchell and George Saville. Saville, not yet back to 2018 vintage Saville, but however, he has definitely, definitely, he's getting himself about to pitch more. In fact, one of those, stop bibbing, mate, for fuck's sake. Uh, one of them, um, that scissor tackle last night probably should have been a straight red, but again, we rode our luck, we got away with one, and we, we finished the game of 11 men on the pitch, and I thought Saville played really well. Billy Mitchell was fucking fantastic last night, honestly. He was like a man possessed, and if you couldn't see how well he played, I'm, I'm worried for you. I'm genuinely worried for you, because he was amazing. And let me tell you about Billy Mitchell. I think that he's come in... This, I'm going to compare it slightly. I'm not putting myself on the level of footballers to when I started the channel. Channel comes on, brand new. Oh, this is brilliant. Oh, it's great. Blah, blah. And then that original fucking hype, people just become used to what they're getting served. So they, they stop mentioning it and, and the retweets go down and the videos get shared less and you get less less comments. But the views are still the same, if not better. So I think with Mitchell, we've been almost spoiled. We need to remember our old years. We need to remember, you know, he's come through the academy. He's a Millwall boy and he's a future captain of the club. And I think because he's been so consistent and so good, I think he's gone under the radar. Honestly, I think he's miles better than Jason Malumbi. Miles better. I think he's past... Completion rate saying last night was 95%. And people might be saying, well, he didn't get it forward much. Well, every time he put it forward, he kept coming fucking straight back. So, 
not his fault. And I thought, honestly, he was like a man possessed. There was one point there in the second half where he's, he's gone out to the to the sort of their left side of midfielder, gone in for a block tackle. Loose ball's gone to their centre midfielder. He's gone and shut him, and then he's gone right across to the left hand side as well, doing doing everyone's running and really fucking sticking himself about the place for the calls. So he was my man of the match. Um, and it was it was it was an easy decision because as I said, we couldn't make anything stick. We knocked the ball around the back. We're getting better at that, but at times we we went with a long diag up towards a phobie's head and it just keeps you know coming back. Nothing against Benick. I don't think he's fantastic. I don't think he's our greatest player. I've made no bones about that. However, I think you need to reflect, you know, he's come straight back in um, and, and, and with Bury as well, they're playing maybe in circumstances that they shouldn't. I don't think a is fully fit and I don't think that Bury should be in the, in the starting 11 at the minute. And I think Rowett knows that. But again, it's a lack of options on the bench. Mason Bennett, come on, did really well. Um, one of that little run where he took on three players and relieved the press, pressure and dragged us up the pitch. And I think that is, you know, we need more of that. We need Mason Bennett to stay fit. It just goes down a lot, and when he gets up, I'm just shitting myself that he's, he's not going to carry on. But he did last night. He got through the game, and I expect him to start in place of Tyler Bury on Saturday. Jeb Wallace is Jeb Wallace. He's our main man. He's our talisman. But I've got to be honest, he'll have five fantastic games and then five, maybe ten shit ones. And I, for me, that's why Jeb can't go to the next level. Because if he goes to the next level and you have two, three of those, you're out the side, you're on the bench. And I don't think that's a place that Jed wants to be. But we can, we can tolerate it with Jed. We can cope with it because we know that at pivotal moments, he will produce magic on occasions and win us points single-handedly. So don't have a problem with having a bad game. That's two in a row for him, by the way. I think he had five fantastic ones before that. Again, you know, he's the fittest man on the fucking planet, isn't he? But, well, maybe not, but he's got to be up there. Um, and, you know, he maybe needs a little bit of a rest. He needs to be taken off at points, but he can't because we've got a severe lack of options available to us on the bench. Well, look. Blackburn didn't get the breakthrough. They should have got the breakthrough. I likened it last night, uh, this morning, sorry, I spoke to a mate. And football's a funny old game because he always says, I'm too negative. I need to look at the bigger picture. Last night, I've done that. It was Operation Ewood Park. Get in, get a point, get out the back door, no matter how you do it. And I likened it to something else to him this morning. I can't say on camera. But sometimes in life, you've just got to fucking get the job done and look at the bigger picture. And I think last night, we absolutely did that and put ourselves in pole position for Saturday. My nipples just went hard. Actually, genuinely tingling, thinking about Saturday's game at the den. Let's move on to it. It's Middlesbrough. Borough currently sit eighth in the table under Chris Wilder, a fantastic manager in my opinion. Of course, he took Sheffield United up and then up again, but left the club and eventually waited, waited his time, bided his time and picked the right job for him, which is Middlesbrough, a big club as we know they currently sit, as I said, eighth in the division, one place above us and two points, which means a win for us at the Den on Saturday. We'll see us move above them and even closer to Luton as well and Sheffield United. Luton we got coming up uh, very soon as well, away from home on a Saturday. So that's going to be a fantastic day out. And I'm excited once again for football. I'm excited to be back amongst it. I wasn't enjoying the channel for a long time, but I am. Let's get back to Middlesbrough. They have won two and lost three. Of their last five games, league games, they did actually beat Spurs in the cup. They're on a little bit of a cup run, of course. They beat Man United on penalties, and I think they got Everton in the next round. So, as of us in 2004, will they have one eye on the cup? Will that drag and drain on their resources, uh, players-wise, going forward? Who knows? That sun needs to fuck off as well as playing up. But anyway, I've got to carry on. As you know, I'm in the mobile office. I've already mentioned it. I've got to give you a prediction. So, here we go. We're going to beat Middlesbrough. And we're going to beat Middlesbrough by one goal to nil. I'm going to go for Benick Afobe to get the goal. The den will be rocking. Please get there if you can, because it should be a fantastic day. And I'm confident going in that we can now become this team that doesn't nearly get there and falls away. I think we've nailed it. I think we're going to do it. I think another clean sheet is coming. I think we're going to beat Middlesbrough by one goal to nil. So, that's your lot for this Thursday club. I hope you have Enjoyed it. Apologies again, I'm doing it in the car. It's, it's nothing I can do at the minute. Burning the candle at both ends, but the channel will continue. As I've already said, I'm pushing, I'm pushing, I'm pushing. I want to get to 20k by the end of the season. So if you haven't already, fuck it, I'm going to put it up again. Please press that subscribe button. It costs you absolutely nothing to do so. Never has, never will. Score predictions will be up tomorrow at 4 p.m. from the other boys at Lions TV. If you think you know what the score is going to be, do not be shy to put it in the comments below and I'll be live streaming the only fan channel to my knowledge in existence across the board that streams and gives live match day commentary direct from in our case the den I'll see you in beautiful South Bermondsey Saturday if you're going
Please subscribe to Lions TV. The buzz is back. Come on, you Lions.